Hello everyone. Welcome to this presentation on to merge or not to merge, that is the question. The subject for this presentation was spurred by several recent experiences I had on Family Search, where well-meaning genealogy enthusiasts who were trying to do their best to do their family history had merged several non-related families together. After suggesting this as a topic for our discussion, it didn't take long for me to realize that there was no way of covering the complexities of merging, and I might add unmerging, in the space of 10 to 12 minutes. So today I am forging ahead on the premise that most of you have done at least some merging in family search. If you are uncomfortable with merging, here on the BYU Family History Library website are some great resources that can help you. My journey started after receiving a record hint from Family Search. I innocently went to attach the hint, only to find the following scenario. You see here that William Beaumont and Sarah Thompson, to whom he was originally connected, had multiple issues. William was purported to be born in Rickmansworth, Hertfordshire, married in Bristol, children born in three different places in Yorkshire, Rotherham, Thornhill and bowlby cum hexthorpe children born in two different places in Cambridgeshire, Swavesey and Stokeham Quay, and the family appeared in London on the 1851 and 1861 censuses. They were literally all over the map. Clearly, these state situations were not all related to the same William and Sarah Beaumont. Being the somewhat decent genealogist that I am, coupled with my need to have everything correct, I set out to untangle the family. As I started down the proverbial rabbit hole, it became clear that instead of Alice in Wonderland, I was sucked into a never-ending cavity, more like journey to the center of the earth. After literally hours and hours of the process of uncombining, researching and recombining, I discovered that there were in fact six different William and Sarah Beaumont couples who had all been merged into one couple with 23 children. Notice the name William Beaumont stays constant. It was finding the maiden names of the wives, all named Sarah, that was a vital part of solving the problem. This and finding additional children all help to document and hopefully uniquely identify each of the six families. Today, I will be focusing on cautions, tips, tricks, and things to avoid when merging. Tip number one, family search lists duplicates as possible duplicates. Many people ignore the word possible and just assume that because family search marks it as a duplicate, it must be so. Tip two, currently the possible duplicates feature is very imprecise. Hopefully more accurate possible duplicates is something that is being considered for a future change in family search. Tip three, if you don't know or if you are unsure of what you are doing when it comes to merging, don't do it. Leave the merge for someone with more experience or learn more about merging, and merging until you feel more confident about doing the merge. If you decide to go ahead with the merge, it is essential that you compare all of the following criteria. Names. Don't be fooled. There are more than one William and Sarah Beaumont. There are many, many, many more than the six I showed you just now. Dates. Be sure the dates match up. Remember too that a birth date and a christening date are usually not the same day and often a marriage date can be supplemented by the band state. Of course, this depends on the country in which you are working. Places. The place should be the same. Some similar place names or jurisdictions can be correct, but you would need to know the makeup of the town or county to ascertain this information. 
Relationships. Make sure the relationships match. Spouses and children can be confused when there are a lot of duplicates being presented. In this example of our William Beaumont, everything matches. So I would be pretty confident that it is a duplicate. Tip number five, use PID numbers as your guide when names are the same. It is easy to get confused. Tip six, if you are unmerging, use a whiteboard or large sheet of paper to diagram out the families so you can keep track. Tip seven, realize that merging duplicates begets duplicates. For example, once you've merged a father, you may end up with one or more duplicate mothers and or children. All these need to be merged also. This is one of the ways the rabbit hole can turn into the journey to the center of the earth. Seen here is Elizabeth Johanna Bampton that has two sets of probably the same parents. Watch what happens when the two duplicate sets of parents are merged. Family Search found 10 duplicates of not only Samuel Bampton, the husband, but also of Betty May, his wife. Only seven of the 10 fit on the screen. Also not shown are several duplicate children that were also generated by the initial and consequent consecutive mergers. Tip eight, avoid creating du duplicates in the first place. When adding a spouse or child to a family, put in as much information as you can to pinpoint the person. This is counterintuitive to a genealogist. We've been schooled to enter less for more results, but that is not the way family search is programmed. If necessary, do a manual search in Find to see if the child is already in Family Search. Here is the family of Henry Simpkin and Matilda Mully. It looks like there are possibly a couple of missing children. After doing some research, I found evidence of a Dot Simpkin born in Cambridgeshire around 1887. I tried to add her as a child. But Family Search did not find a match. I decided to do a manual search using Find and found two very likely, likely Dot Simpkins. I copied the PID of the most complete record, went to Add Child again, and chose Find by PID and added her as a child. I will still need to check out the second, less precise duplicate, and if it is likely the same, I will need to merge the two. If you are undoing a merge, you must unattach all the incorrect sources from all the incorrect people they are attached to. This example of sources should raise a red flag. When you see this many sources with unfinished attachments, it is a good indication that inaccuracies are present. You will also need to unattach incorrect entries in other information that have been attached to your unmerged person. If you don't do this, Family Search will look at that information and keep producing the same incorrect duplicates. Make sure you also dismiss the wrong record hints and give a valid reason statement, including PIDs. And finally, tip number 10, shoot your family member that produced the bad merges an email. Some of you might want to take off the email part of that statement and kindly explain to them what you did and why and maybe refer them to some resources to help them understand merging better. One last thought.
let's keep in mind the reason we are merging and unmerging in the first place. We are trying to create a family record that is worthy of all acceptation. Good luck and happy, accurate and successful merging and unmerging.